Hey, what's up, YouTube? Sonic Kevin here, and in today's video, we'll be covering the qualities of a good IGL in Valorant. To be an impactful IGL, you must have a well developed game sense. Now, game sense is a term that is loosely thrown around a lot, so I broke it down into nine different skills that an IGL should have in order to help benefit a team in any given play. In today's video, I'll be reviewing nine different clips from my stream while also providing you with my thought process throughout the round and also a post round analysis. After going through some of these clips, you'll start to notice a trend in how these nine different skill sets for an IGL kind of overlap from clip to clip and how they all kind of intertwine and work together. I'm Sonic Kevin and you can follow me on Twitch and the social links down below. Now, nine things that I bundle into the term game sense include positional and map awareness of the entire team, understanding of the economy system, so knowing when to buy, when to save, and when to go for a clutch, having overall map and game knowledge, and also attention to detail, so ability timings, certain map spots, having clean, precise comms. Uh, this kind of applies to pretty much every player on a team, though. Adapting to new situations quickly and building strats on the fly. The ability to understand and work with different rosters and also why solo queue is good practice for that. The ability to read the enemy team's mind and make plays around that that they don't expect. Having a strong mental because a game isn't over until a team wins 13 rounds. And last but not least, being able to identify weak points within the team during a game and also post-match when reviewing the demo. All right, in this first clip, it's a 4v4 situation, and we have our Omen kind of lurking in B hookah area, and we're setting up for an A execute uh, for right when the poison orb is about to fade. And as we push up the entire time, I'm seeing that he spots someone on the minimap and gets the pick on B. And so I call for a rotate over to B, and we make it with just enough time to comfortably get a plant and secure a site. Knowing that Viper it, ulted on A, and there was probably also someone else on site helping her, uh, once we got that pick on B, I called for a instant portal play because we knew that there would at most be only one more person on B site. And this play ended up closing out the match for us. Yeah, I got it. Nice. Easy. Moving on to our next clip, we have a 2v3 situation where we are on the attacking side and I start off by spotting out the Cypher and I catch him as he swings out after throwing out that tripwire from under heaven. Now it's important to remember where he places that tripwire because that comes in handy later on for this play. I move up to the upper part of ramps to help out my teammate and since we're both low on health, I pull out my ult and try to find another pick. Unfortunately, my raise gets spotted by the Sage, but I do see her on my UI for my ultimate. So I drop the ult on her and knowing that she would have to back off out of that area under heaven and Silva was also on A site, I decided to run B with the bomb. Now as I'm moving through vents and back towards mid, I decide to do a double take and uh, pretend that I'm going B but actually going down towards sewers and walking all the way back down to A site. At this point, I'm halfway down through sewers and I've heard that at least two of them has rotated through vent. So once I get out through the opening on the other side of sewers towards A side, I run knife out and I start bunny hopping, remembering where the cypher tripwire was. And I happen to jump over it perfectly. At this point, I plant default because it's the quickest way and I basically have no time. And uh, I would be able to wall bang that from heaven. Knowing this, I walk towards CT and I play the close angle, hoping that they don't check their corners properly. And I happen to be able to catch out two people. I heard the breach on heaven side, and so I decided to walk up and start moving up because he dropped. And I heard the defuse, so I start wall banging. Now, at this point, he swings out, but what I don't realize is that he had already gotten half of the defuse. And so. During the time that I'd taken out the stim beacon oh, no. and tried to set up a easier wall bang, uh, he had actually been able to finish defusing the spike. So a little miscalculation on my part here. I would not have pulled out the stim beacon had I known that he had stuck the bomb for half of it. In this clip, I'm rotating towards B site because my teammates calm that they see multiple outside in B main. Now looking at the minimap, I see my Silva walking mid, and so I know that he's going to eventually hit a flank through Ramen and into the back of B main. 
Now, I have my ultimate, and so if I could somehow get a bunch of kills inside of B main or on the choke near tunnels, or at least force them towards my teammate, we could get an easy kill or two. And so I call for my Sage to drop a slow orb inside of B tunnels to prevent them from exploding out onto B site. And so they'll be stuck inside B main for the time being. Not slow? because I know that the slow orb prevents them from pushing out of sight, and I know my Sova is near the entrance orb. of the other side of B main. I draw my ultimate on the right side of it, which flushes them out I'm towards the left, and my Sova is basically able to kill pretty much everyone oh, who was nice. able to escape from the ultimate. Let's go. In this clip, it's a 2v3 situation, and they had just planted the spike and walled off the CT entrance, so I would have to walk all the way to elbow. Now, looking at our money and also at the gun that I had, a Spectre, I know that earlier in the round, I killed a person with the Vandal in bathrooms, but I didn't have time to pick it up. My teammate Sage also had a Vandal as well, so I decided that the best course of action here would be for me to call for a save and then fall back to bathrooms and try to get that Vandal for free. By doing this, our team would have enough money for me and Sage to both drop a rifle for another teammate and we would be able to secure a full buy next round. And another reason why this would also be the better decision is because of the Viper ult that was burned in this round after the wall was put up. You'll be able to see in the next two rounds following this round that after being 0-8, we'll be able to win out those rounds with the rifles that we were able to give to our teammates and basically turn our economy around and snowball the already bad half that we were having on CT side. In the beginning of this clip, it's a 5v3 situation. And uh, before the clip, I was able to get a pick on a showers. So I do remember that they were not able to get that orb control. So do keep that in mind as that will be handy later. As I see our jet get the pick on the market flank, I immediately call for a rotate on A because I know for sure that there would only be one person on A since they could only play two max on each site unless they wanted to give up one. Unfortunately, it seems that some of our teammates didn't get the memo on top of the breach ult that was already started as I was making that call. So half of our team goes ahead and dies to the two remaining on B site. But because I'm able to see that there are two for sure on B site, I call for a definite rotate to A for a free bomb plan. Again, our jet doesn't listen to the comms and just goes ahead and dies, turning this easily 3v2 situation into a 2v2 situation but it's fine now going back to the importance of the orb i know i'm one ult point away from getting my ultimate now my teammate recognizes this and so he tells my sage to give me the bomb and for me to plant so i can get my ult and drop a sack of jello onto a site However, I tell my sage to plant the bomb for me in bathrooms, and during that time that he's getting to that location, that showers orb that I was fighting for earlier that was never taken is still there, and so I'm able to get my ult off before the plant even happens, and then drop it right outside of bathrooms where the bomb is planted. From this location, my teammate can still see the bomb because my ult is just on the outside, of last where 20, it is planted, and uh, he can cover my CT in heaven while I watch the bathroom's yeah, yeah. angle. And it just so happens that one of the enemies took the TP towards bathroom's angle, and I'm able to find the final kill on him to close out the game. Attackers win. This next clip is pretty straightforward, and it's just me teaching a Cypher a new camera spot that he didn't know how to do. By teaching this Cypher how to do the A-long cam for the first time, he immediately spots someone on A-long and tags him with his dart, which forces the guy to retreat and allows us to push into A-long early. Teaching your teammates stuff that they might not know mid-match can actually benefit your team greatly if used properly. In this clip, we're in a 4v4 with two of our teammates killing one person to take control of a site and Viper instantly ulting for zone control. Me as the Sage and our Rays have been lurking on the other side of mid and we are walking back and clearing our spawn to make sure that no one can flank us from there as well as from sewers. I tell the Rays to check ramps first alone because I have res and also I recognize that he is one ult point away from his ulti. And uh, I ultimately had the plan of either letting him just get that kill by himself or letting him die because no matter what happens, he's going to get his ult 
when I res him. At this point in a 2v4, I know that the series guy should have pushed by now, so I go for the res. As soon as I got the res off, I know that all Viper had to do was buy time. And then after she died, I would just have to force them away from the ramps angle. So our race would have time to set up for a satchel ult combo and kill the person defusing the spike. And just off of that, that was a clean, simple round secured. All I gotta do is res. This next tip kind of just goes to show general game knowledge and adaptability on just what you can do with different abilities like mollies and utility and how you can kind of just predict where you think people will be and set up different plays depending on how you're retaking a site. I land a perfect molly on a guy that gets revealed and the molly just starts burning him instantly. Bro, did you see my molly? Perfect down there. Now this last clip kind of features both good comms and uh, general awareness of how my teammates are playing. We recognize that there's two enemies left and they got to pick on B. Because my teammate called that they took the TP towards bathroom side, I immediately return towards A and watch bathrooms and tell my teammate to race the one way there. If you're curious about how to do that Viper one way smoke on bathrooms as well as some other useful smokes and mollies on bind, then you can check out my guide on the top right of the video. Now this was kind of perfect timing since the orb raised just as he pushes out of bathroom doors and I get that nice flick to the head and the jet is lagging behind from TP. After that initial pick on bathrooms, it was basically game over and we secured the dub. Nice, GG. Defenders win. GG, boys. Yeah, good work. And that's it for today's video. If you're still learning how to play Valorant, let me know down in the comments below which agents you play. And don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And he's gone.